Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk to you about mitochondrial Eve. Uh, this is a topic that I've been particularly interested in lately. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos um, from Nathaniel Jensen talking about estimating the time to their most recent common ancestor for humans using mitochondrial and Y chromosome data. Um, and he seems to be interpreting this timing and this individual as like the common ancestor of all humans. Um, and, and this is particularly strange to me because it seems to misunderstand what the most recent common ancestor actually represents um, and kind of the basics of coalescent theory. So what I want to do is just kind of introduce this model from a simplistic perspective and then walk us through why his interpretation of the data doesn't actually match the theory that he's trying to apply to it. Um, okay, so first to get at this, let's imagine a panmictic population of constant size n. Panmictic simply means that all the individuals are mating at random. You can imagine them as choosing their mates from like beans in a bag, right? It's a completely blind random chance. Um, the size in the next generation is going to be exactly equal to the size in the present generation. Um, and what I've done is I've put numbers on each one of the circles to represent the lineages that they are kind of descending from, okay? Um, so what we want to do is we want to make a second generation of our little circles here from a random draw of individuals from the first, all right? So the way that I did this, um, for those of you that use any um, like computer programming, like if you use Python or R or anything like that, you'll be familiar with some of the syntax. I just created an object that is a list from one to 10, and then I sampled it, I sampled that object 10 times with replacement. Um, so basically that allows um, us to populate the next generation with lineages drawn from the first, but with a chance that we don't draw this, you know, a particular lineage and that we may draw a different lineage more than once. Okay, so, th so that's effectively what we're doing here. And this is the basic way that the Wright Fisher model works. Um, for those of you familiar with that term, um, it's just a finite population with random draws of gametes that are going to populate the next generation. So you can notice what it's kind of done here. We get two draws of two, but we don't get any draws from one. Two from three, two from four, one from five, none from six or seven, one from eight, two from nine, and none from ten. So just in this first generation, we have lost several lineages. And then I just do this again. Um, following that, I take the random draws from this distribution instead of from this one, creating a new object that is now, again, just the draws from the one that survived. And then I sampled it um, exactly the same way, and that gives us the next generation. And I did this all the way down until eventually, in this particular case, only one lineage is left, and that is the eight lineage. Okay, so as a kind of thought question, is lineage eight more fit than the rest? I should think about this for a second, um, and think about your understanding of fitness uh, in like an evolutionary context, and whether or not there is any form of selection going on in this population. So think about it. If you think you have a good answer, please drop it in the comments. I would love to see what people think about this particular question. Okay, so here's our population. It's what I what I just showed you. Um, and what we're going to do is prune away all of the extinct lineages. So these are the lineages. Just to step back one, you see them there, and now they're gone. Those are the ones that left no descendants, okay? Um, another question here, which generation in the past do we see the most recent common ancestor of all descendant individuals in our population? Well, note that we can technically follow it to here because we know that this generation exists, but is that the most recent common ancestor? Well, no, this is the most recent common ancestor, right? So this is the individual of which all descendant lineages come from, okay? So this is mitochondrial Eve. Now note immediately what that tells us, right? For one, we are missing that there were a whole bunch of under, other individual lineages in the population that just by chance went extinct. Um, and that also this is not the oldest individual. There was an individual older than them. This one just happens to be 
as the phrase implies, the most recent common ancestor, the TMRCA, most recent common ancestor. Okay, so from this, let's think about this continuing into the future. Who will Eve be if we go forward? Um, so I'm just kind of adding randomly some more lines, some more lineages. You can see we're, we're populating and splitting lineages. And now what has happened? Well, we prune away the individual, the lineages that have gone extinct. And now look, suddenly we have a new Eve right here. So again, by chance, going forward in time, you can lose more lineages. You get lineages that split. And then all of a sudden, the most recent common ancestor is no longer this individual. It's now this individual. So what can we take away from all of this? So concepts like mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosome Adam are very, very misleading. They're misleading because they're using, they're borrowing phrases from the book of Genesis, which literally means the first man and first woman, right? But that's not what they mean in a coalescent context, right? They just mean the last common ancestor of the descendant lineages. Uh, mitochondrial Eve was not the first human, nor can she be used to estimate the origin of humans, right? Because again, this lineage predated this one. And we know that this lineage came from one that even predated it, right? So again, we cannot use this common ancestor to estimate when humans came about, right? It literally doesn't make any sense, all right? And then finally, the timing of Eve will change just due to drift. So going into the future, a thousand years from now, if we were to re try to reconstruct Jensen's work all over again, we could very likely get a different time because the lineage that descended all the way back to that common ancestor is now gone and it's a more recent one, right? And that's expected to happen. That's what I just showed you. The basics of coalescent theory expect to happen. Um, so if you thought this was interesting, hit a like, drop me a comment. Um, if you have any thoughts about the thought question I gave you before about lineage eight being more fit than the rest, please be sure to comment. I would love to have a discussion about fitness um, in an evolutionary context. If you have any questions about coalescent theory, some of the mathematics behind it, I again, I tried to really prune this presentation down to not be overwhelming with math and to just give you the basics of how it works. Um, if that is something that interests you, please let me know. I'd be happy to do a video actually going through some of the math. Um, I just didn't want to lose a bunch of the audience halfway through. Um, so again, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day, uh, and I'll catch you next time.